All right, so time to look at storing a user. And there's a couple of things that we need to do here in case our query fails. We want to respond with a 400 request. So let's go ahead and define out our route. Let's create our controller method. We'll get it set up in Postman. And then we need to make a slight change to the database within our container. So we know that to store something, we use a post request. And in this case, we don't need to provide an ID because we're creating a new resource. We're creating a new user. So this is going to be a store method. And again, this can be anything you like, but just keep consistency within all of your controllers. So if we head over to user controller, let's define this out. We'll go ahead and send the request in Postman and we'll see what we need to do from here. So let's just go ahead and put nothing in here. We do want to make sure that we have our request response and args in. Uh, we don't necessarily need our args here, so you can get rid of these if you want, but we definitely need our request because we're going to be reading data that we send through uh, from the body. So if we just duplicate this last request here, go ahead and edit this. So we uh, change the name properly. So users store, go ahead and update that. And let's change this over to slash users and let's send a post request. Now the body is where we're going to send through this data and we're going to be sending this through as JSON. Obviously, uh, normally on a website, you'd store this uh, or at least send this with form data. But in this case, we want to send this as JSON. So let's just send the request and you can see down here that we get 200 OK. Of course, we're not doing anything. Now, we need to, at some point when we do this, catch an exception. So just before we go anywhere, I'm going to come over to index and where we have set our database, we need to go ahead and set this up so that when something fails, we actually throw an exception uh, rather than just silently error. So to do this, all I do is create a database variable and then in here we can set attributes on this connection. So let's say set attribute and then for the first argument, it's PDO attribute error mode that will just give us the code that we need to set. And then we have another constant in here, which is the error mode exception. So all we're doing here is saying we'll set the error mode to throw an exception if something goes wrong. And then we just return that new database instance like that. So that is set up ready to catch exceptions and we can go ahead and start to store this. So to actually store this then, like I said before, we're not doing any validation, but you would want to do validation here at some point. Of course, you need to make sure that the data that you're storing is appropriate. But for now, let's just go ahead and store this user and uh, we'll look at some of the response codes and how to respond. So again, we're going to say this container database. And again, we're going to prepare a statement. So let's go ahead and prepare this. And then into this, we are going to insert into the users table. And we need to choose the data that we're inserting. And in this case, it's the name and the email address. We obviously don't need to store the ID. And the values are going to be a name parameter and an email parameter or a placeholder. Now, actually, just before we do this, let's take a look at getting this request data back. Now, if we again do a var dump on request get params, uh, we know that if we just open up request.php within Slim, and we look at the get params method, you can see here, fetch associative array of body and query string parameters. So this will include anything we send through in the query string, and it will also send uh, or include anything we send through in the body. And that includes a JSON body as well. So if we just head over to Postman and basically pop some data in here, just make sure you're over in the body tab over in raw. And by default, this may be on text, but you want to go ahead and change this to uh, application JSON. What this will also do is it will set a content type in your headers as well. So that just helps any framework you're dealing with uh, work out what you're sending through. So in here we have an object, we have a name. So let's go ahead and just store Mabel. And then for the email address, we're going to go ahead and send through Mabel at codecourse.com. Let's send this through and you can see here we get an array of that data. So we can extract this out and insert it into our database. So let's get rid of this var dump. Now we need to execute this statement passing through the data that we need to store. Now what we could technically do is say request get params and that would of course include an associative array which would bind the name and the email to this. But to be honest, I much prefer making this a little bit more explicit. 
uh, particularly if you are validating as well. You may not want to store other things, you just want to be very explicit about what you are actually storing here. So we're gonna say name, passing through request, this time get param, the singular, because we just want to extract out the name. And then we just do the same for the email. So let's go ahead and send this across as well, like so. Now what we are gonna be doing is catching an exception here. So this will throw an exception if something goes wrong. So we can deal with that in a minute, but for now, let's just return that newly created user. Now, how do we do this? Well, we obviously need a way to get a user by their ID, which we already have down here. So we can use that with the last inserted ID from this execution to then show that user. So we're gonna say response with JSON. And of course, what we want to respond with is this get user by ID. And the ID in here comes from this container database last insert ID, like so. So we're grabbing the last inserted ID, re-looking that user up and responding with that JSON. So now when we insert a new user, we'll get that user back. Now this is important because when someone's using an API like this, when they say create a forum post or a forum topic, it's highly likely that they're gonna want that back so then they can update the UI on the front end. So when we create something, we generally respond with what we've just created. And this may include additional data like the ID as well. So if we set, actually send this across now, we should see that come back. And you see, we've got an ID of three, we've got the name and the email, and of course our database has been updated with that new record as well. Okay, so what about if something goes wrong? Well, in this case, we can test this out by sending across, say, some rubbish for some property. We know that in this case, we're actually just gonna receive a slim application error. And if we come over to the preview just here, we get a PDO exception um, and basically an integrity constraint violation, which means that the column email can, cannot be null because we're not providing an email column. So we need to catch this exception somehow. And this includes anything that goes wrong anywhere. So if just generally something goes wrong with storing, we're gonna respond with a 400. So let's try the following execution of this statement. We need to catch an exception. And because we set up PDO to throw an exception, it will now throw a PDO exception. We get that exception information back and we can do something in here. Now, just before I do anything, I want to go and use this at the top again, otherwise we'll run into problems. And let's think about what we can do here. Now, it's entirely up to you. If we just do a var dump on E and just kill the page there, Let's take a look at what happens when we do send this across. You can see here we've got a uh, PDO exception. We have a message in here, so we can extract this entire message out if we wanted to. And we also have error codes as well. Really though, we don't necessarily want to directly use get message to extract the message out. Uh, this would just mean that uh, you would be revealing things about your database. So what you could do in here technically is check the error code. So if again, we just get rid of this if statement quickly and do a var dump on E, and I believe it's get code, let's just have a look at this. It may be something else. Yeah, so we get a 23,000, so 2300 uh, error code. You could check that and specifically output a, a very specific message. But to be honest, it would be enough to just say return response with status like so a 400 because we know that this has gone wrong and we now see the following so we get a 400 bad request okay so in this case what you could also do is write to the body at the same time so you could say something like json encode pass an array here and maybe inside of here say error could not store user and then when you do that, you get an error, could not store user. So really it's entirely up to you what you do here. For now, I'm gonna leave this off just to keep things super simple, but you might want to do that at some point. So now that we've done this then, we can, if we actually choose the correct information, go ahead and store a record. So I can go ahead and create a new one just in here, like so. That works, but of course, if anything goes wrong along the way, then we know that we get that 400. So that is it, that is storing users. Of course, around this, you could use other things like validation 
You could again be a little bit more specific about your error, but that's generally how we would store a user and then immediately respond with that newly created user.